Artificial intelligence, or AI, is the technology behind everything from self-driving cars to military drones. Last week, a new documentary premiered that focuses on both the benefits and the dangers of AI. Do you trust this computer? It features interviews with some of the tech world's greatest minds, including Elon Musk, who adores the film via Twitter. Here's a sample. Most people are not aware that what Google is doing is actually a form of artificial intelligence. They just go there, they type in a thing, Google gives them the answer. With each search, we train it to be better. Sometimes we type in the search and it tells us the answer before you have finished asking the question. You know, who is the president of Kazakhstan? And it'll just tell you. You don't have to go to the Kazakhstan national website to find out. Didn't used to be able to do that. That is artificial intelligence. It's one of these striking contradictions that we're facing. Google and Facebook et al. have built businesses on giving us as a society free stuff. But it's a Faustian bargain. They're extracting something from us in exchange. It does strike right at the issue of how much we should trust these machines. Documentarian Chris Payne is the film's director and executive producer. Chris, good morning. Well, thank you for having me. So tell me, how did you come up with this idea to do this doc? You know, I got one of those messages when you plug your smartphone into your computer, and it goes, do you trust this computer? <laughs> and I had this like, I don't think I do as much as I used to. <laughs> right. It's like, so I thought, well, let's, let's look at that. What's going on behind the scenes? And maybe uh, there's a cool film in here. As you as you started asking that question and asking it with some of the brightest people in the in the in the whole AI sphere, did you get more fearful? I kind of did. Yeah. What, I mean, what scares you the most? Well, you you kind of assume that tech is going to roll out in a way that's just more and more helpful, and I think it really has. But um, I, what I realized was that the algorithms behind uh, so much of the stuff we do every day are are getting to know us better than we know ourselves. Yeah. And that could that could begin to work against us. You know, when my Indian grandmother came to America in the 80s, she could not understand the answering machine. It just boggled her mind. And sometimes I feel like my Indian grandmother when we talk about AI. I just don't get where this is going. What do you think the biggest developments are in AI right now? I think what the biggest stuff going on is behind the scenes stuff the facial recognition, mm -hmm. um, the way they're putting it into uh, military drones and other kinds of military applications. And then the really great stuff too, in, in medicine and in when we go shopping. I mean, it's becoming the new electricity. It's behind everything. What's, what's interesting, that, as you point out though, is it, it's it, more, than, more than countries, it's companies that are mm -hmm. leading this revolution. That's is right. It not? Yes, that's right. Yeah, the biggest players are Google and Facebook and IBM. I mean, certainly the Chinese are pouring billions of dollars into this, but right here in the States, is, we have really some of the best AI in the world. You actually refer to Google as the Manhattan Project of AI. What did you mean by that? Well, behind the scenes, you know, one thing that Google's doing is they're very interested in creating very smart machines that can win games. And they have a company there called DeepMind, and DeepMind, you know, is winning more and more games. They, I guess they won Go this year. Mm. They, and as these machines get smarter, we don't know what kinds of games they're going to end up winning. And so it seems kind of harmless at first, but it may be a, a long, longer term risk for us. The, the biggest, one of the biggest fears that many people have is ultimately it'll start taking our jobs. How realistic is that and how pervasive do you think that's going to become? I, it's happening. You know, I, I did a, a show on the New York Stock Exchange yesterday and I noticed that there were a lot less people there than there were five there's almost, years ago. There's almost nobody there. I know, it's just a bunch of computers sitting yeah. around. And in medicine, and uh, in fact, uh, IBM has a job that one day I, they won't need me to direct documentaries. I think, I think you see it in blue collar jobs, we know about those, and, and also in white collar jobs like first year analytics. You know, uh, computers can do a lot of things that lawyers used to do for the first few days. So we're all, we're all threatened by these, but we're also helped. It's yes. not like a one-way street. It's yeah. like it's making our jobs easier, but it's also beginning to take them away. Yeah. You say that we are slaves to technology and we're not returning back. So <laughs> onward, upwards, and onwards, Chris Payne. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me.